I'm going to start off with news you can use as usual. Uh, interesting article out this morning on CNBC housing report. This is from the S&P Case Shiller uh, group. Case Shiller is the folks that predicted the, the meltdown in 2008 and, and uh, subsequent to that. Uh, in fact, these guys have predicted the last three or four uh, industry meltdowns in a row. But here's what they say this morning. Home prices in March were 13.2% higher than March 2020. That's the largest month over month, year over year increase in 15 years. Uh, the last time that happened was in December 2005. December 2005, I can remember pretty clearly because in January 2006 is when we started our run for about nine months of not making anything less than $100,000 per property. It was a crazy period of time. And then going into early 2007 or late 2006, it started to cool off. So, you know, I, I'm seeing that we've got better times ahead than worse. Um, what, here's some other trends that they're seeing um, besides that. But they, they strongly align what we're seeing today with what happened in December of 2005. So you wanna kind of see how things are gonna work uh, you know, history repeats itself. I go back and take a look at that kind of information and, and see. Um, it says that the data are consistent with the hypothesis that COVID has encouraged potential buyers to move from urban apartments to suburban homes. That's where the majority of the shift has been. Uh, the demand may represent buyers who accelerated purchases. It would have happened anyway over the next several years. Um, and, but it says, alternatively, there may be a secular change in preferences leading to a permanent shift in the demand curve for housing. What that means is uh, there's a lot of uh, folks who lived in apartments that were going to eventually, you know, try and move out of the city apartment to the suburban areas. And that may have just sped this up during this period of time. Uh, that combined with the low interest rates may have created a permanent shift in the demand curve from uh, inside the city to more rural areas. And we've seen that now for probably a year in our business, that stuff that's out further out, uh, you know, even in places that are, you know, kind of pretty far from a main city center are, are selling at a pretty decent clip. The, the last thing that they pointed out in their article, uh, and you can, once you've read enough Case Shiller, you can always find the, you know, the other shoe gets dropped in the last paragraph, but Here's what they said in the last paragraph. Sales are just now beginning to weaken and prices will usually follow. But again, the usual trends are not dependable in this very unusual housing market. I would argue that they are in fact dependable because once again, history will repeat itself. And, um, you know, we're gonna see sales beginning to continue to weaken and prices will follow. Uh, prices will drop and continue to follow in some areas. We see that in, in various areas of the country um, you know, for those of you who are taking a lot of Facebook leads, uh, you, you get this real dichotomy between people who think they've got the best thing since sliced bread and they should be overpaid and over rewarded for the fact that they're just offering to all of us, the, the masses, their, their fine, beautiful home. And then you get other people who are realistic and know that the rats are leaving the ship and that they need to get stuff sold quickly and they're willing to take a pretty good haircut. So same thing I saw 15, 16 years ago. Uh, it's the same thing that's shaping up now. Uh, and we've been, like I said, talking about that for at least a year. Uh, it's just delayed because the interest rate has been kept so low uh, for a long period of time. So with that said, let's go ahead and get to our calls. 